Petruchio, came to Padua purposely to look for a wife. My good friend Petruchio, tell me now, sweet friend, what happy gale holds you to Padua here from old Verona? Such a wind that scatters young men through the world to seek their fortunes. I have crowns in my purse and goods at home, and so I've come abroad to see the world. If thou know a woman rich enough to be Petruchio's wife, then tell me. I've come to wife in Padua. If well to leave, then happily in Padua. Hortensio tells Petruchio about Catherine, believing on no facts. Petruchio is not discouraged by the reports of Catherine's temper when he hears that she is very rich and very handsome. He resolves to marry this beautiful but shrewish woman and tame her into a meek and manageable wife. I will not sleep, Hortensio, until I see her, and therefore I leave you. Unless you will accompany me hither, Petruchio, I must go with thee, for Baptista, Catherine's father, has the jewel of my life, his youngest daughter, beautiful Bianca, and withholds her from me and other suitors till Catherine the first have a husband. Petruchio and Hortensio make their way to Baptista's home. On their way, they meet Lucentio, disguised as a tutor, and his servant, Tronio, disguised as a nobleman. They also meet Gremio, to whom Hortensio tells about the foolish Petruchio. They all travel together to Baptista's house, where, where Catherine is tormenting her. Yes, Mara, neighbor Baptista. Good morning, Gremio. Come sit here gentlemen. And you, good sir. Pray, have you not a daughter called Catherine? Fair and virtuous? I have a daughter, sir, called Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> By the gentleman of the road, sir, that hearing of her beauty and her wit, her friendliness and bashful modesty, her wondrous qualities and mild behavior, be bold enough to come forward as a gift. You are welcome, sir, and the others. But for my daughter Catherine, this I know. She's not for you, the more my grief. I see you do not mean to part with her, or else you like not my company. Mistake me not, I speak but as I find. Where are you from, and what may I call you? Petruchio's my name, Antonio's son, a man well known throughout all Italy. I know him well. You're welcome for his sake. At this time, Lucentio is introduced as a new tutor, and Tronio, another suitor for Bianca's hand. Baptista is delighted that a tutor has been found, and sends the four young men off to spend the afternoon with the girls. <laughs> Petruchio is anxious to begin the process of bargaining for Catherine's hand. But before anything else is done, he wants to know what Catherine's dowry will be. Tell me, if I get your daughter's love, what dowry shall I have? After my death, one half of my lands and 20,000 crowns. Petruchio is impressed with the dowry being offered, but Baptista reminds him he must win Catherine's love first. Petruchio claims that will be soon, in spite of Baptista's warning that Catherine is not exactly pleasant. The more terrible things Petruchio hears about Catherine, the more eager he is to meet her. Now, Senor Petruchio, will you go with me, or shall I send my daughter to see you? I pray you, send her to me. I will woo her with spirit. Say she reels. <laughs> Why then, I'll say she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. Say that she frowns, I'll tell her she looks as clear as morning roses. If she do bid me leave, I'll give her thanks as though she bid me stay a week. If she denies to wed, I'll break the day. But here she comes, now for Trukio speaks. <clears throat> Good morrow, Kate, for that's your name, I hear. Then you are hard of hearing. They call me Catherine, then, to talk of me. You lie in faith, for you are called plain Kate, and Bonnie Kate, and sometimes Kate the Curse, but Kate, the prettiest Kate. Myself, I am moved to woo thee for my wife. Moved? In good time. <coughs> Let him that moved you hither remove you hence. Come, Kate, sit on my knee. <laughs> Me, you mean? Good, Kate, I know thee to be but young and light. Too light for such as you to catch, and yet as heavy as my weight should be. Come, come, you wasp, you are too angry. By the waspish, best beware my sting. My remedy is then to pluck it out. I, if the fool, can find where it lies. Who knows not where a wasp goes where it sting? But come again, good Kate. I am a gentleman. Oh? 
I swear I'll cuff you if you strike again. If you strike me, you are no gentleman. Hey, come, Kate. You must not look so sour. It is my fashion when I see a crab. Why, here's no crab, and therefore I look not so. There is. There is. Then show me it. Had I a looking glass, I would. What, you mean my face? Well, I ain't just such a young lover. Now, by St. George, I'm too young for you. Yet you are withered. Then tis with cares. I care not. Hey, Kay, you shall not escape. I'll strike you by state. Let me go. This is my fire. Poor Catherine, for two, the pillow, and then the coverlet, and then the sheets, all the time. 
not pretend that he's doing it for her sake. Having no bed, she must stay up all night. This forces her to stay awake for the second night in a row. If she chances to doze, Petruchio keeps her awake with complaints about the work of the servant. Are you not happy? Faith, I am as miserable as can be. Look up thy spirit. See how diligent I am. I have dressed thy meat and bring it to thee. Surely, sweet Kate, this kindness merits thanks. What? Not a word? After all my pains and you love it not? Here, take away this dish. I pray you let it stay. Even the poorest service is repaid with thanks. And so shall mine before you touch the meat. I thank you, sir. Having finally thanked Petruchio, Kate Catherine sits down to eat with Hortensio. Her husband informs her of his intention to outfit her with finery for a return trip to her father's house. He calls in a tailor and a haberdasher with their wares. As each craftsman shows Petruchio is not so easily pleased, he dislikes the cap as soon as Kate shows her approval. He sends the haberdash away and turns to the tailor. The dress, which is exactly as Petruchio ordered it, offends Petruchio. He rails at the tailor, who replies that the dress is of the latest fashion and made as ordered. Catherine loves the gown, but Petruchio ignores her desires and sends the tailor away. And in a side to Hortensio, Petruchio sees that the tailor and the haberdasher are well, are well paid for both their wares and the inconvenience they've suffered. 